Hello everybody. Welcome to the class of calculus. So today's topic is differentiation. So we shall discuss about what is differentiation and how we apply this to the problem area. Here we can see the topic differentiation. So before we define more about uh, differentiation, let's do one experiment by this example. So in this example, you can see that the points A00, B.50.75, C0.8, 1.04, D0.95, and Y coordinate is 1.8525, then E point is 0 0.99, and its Y coordinate is 1.9701, .1. and finally, another point, F has coordinate one and two. These all lie on the curve y equal to fx. So, if these such things are given, then you have to find, you have to complete the table to show the gradients of the codes cf, df, and ef. So, in order to find the gradient of the code, what you do, we use this formula. gradient of code that is also called slope you can indicate that by m and its uh, formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so for example in order to find slope of for example point af what you can do you can use uh, the formula y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1, all right? So you can see that point A is mentioned as A is 0, 0. And uh, then you have to find F. F is given as 1, 2. So say this point as x1, y1, and this is x2, y2, all right? So if you apply uh, this formula to these two points, you will have the value of slope or that is the gradient of that line passes through the points A and B having coordinates 0, 0 and 1, 2. So if you put these values, so y2 means it is 2 and then y1 is 0 and then x2 is 1 and then x1 is 0. So this is 2 divided by 1 and this 2 divided by 1 is 2. So, gradient of the code AF, you can see this is 2. And the similar thing you apply to BF5 and then EF. EF and lastly, you will have this value 2.99. So, you, according to your question, complete the table to show the gradients of the codes CF, DF and EF and we have completed this table. Now in question number two, you can see that use the values in the table to predict the value of dy by dx, that is the difference of y by difference of x when x equals to one. So in that case, what is called here that if it is y2 minus y1, so this is the difference in y and then this is difference in x and difference in y can be denoted as dy by difference of y as dy and difference of x as dx, all right, fine here. So on this graph, I have plotted all these points over here, just by general method. So my points are like this. A is here, 0, 0, then B, C, D, E, F. You can see here that uh, A to F is the farthest distance, that is the greatest the code of length highest here and from b to f if you talk like in here then b to f is uh, code has length less than the code of length af and similarly if you go to uh, if you compare point c and f it is nearer than 
B from F. And if you go here at this point, it is very close to F and E looks like almost on F. Although not in that case, this question is asking you to use the values in the table to predict the values of dy dx when x equal to one. So this can be evident, uh, first of all, by graph also here. So in this graph, uh, you can see that if you, if you join a and f, for example, your code looks like this. All right. Now, if you join B and F here, your code looks like this, B and F. Draw this, it will look like as if this is tangent, as if this line is tangent at tangent at F, then you can say uh, this line as code at F. Then what does it mean? If this line is tangent at F, that means it is, it has, you, you'll be able to find gradient of the curve, gradient of the curve at point F one, two, that means here X equals to one. And this is almost the tangent. Okay. And this is almost the tangent. And this sort of difference also we got by taking the differences of x and y. So we can say that in general, gradient of the curve at that point x equal to one is dy by dx. And this is in fact the gradient between the points E and F. So you can see that gradient of EF looks closer and closer to the tangent at F. So therefore dy by dx point, uh, you can see that uh, the gradient of EF is 2.99. So if it goes uh, even closer to point, if X goes even closer to point X, whatever it looks almost like tangent at this point, okay? So therefore, dy by dx, that is the derivative value for this curve is 3. Let's do a, an analytical work that uh, what is dy by dx again. So here in this case, like previously, you have seen that if these two points are very and very closer, very and very close to each other, then what happens? Gradient of code PQ tends to the gradient of the curve at point, uh, tends to the gradient of the uh, gradient of this curve at point P. So here in this figure, you can see that coordinate for X is, coordinate for P is X, Y, and coordinate for Q is X plus delta X and Y plus delta Y. So where you can see delta X and delta Y are very small, you, we say, or a small, very small increment, increments in X and Y respectively. Very a small means uh, how you can uh, see these two points P and Q that just like here it is E and F. All right, so this point is E and F. So if these are very a small, they are at very a small distance, then what happens? Your code will look like as if this is tangent at point F. So in that case, we have zoomed in. So it looks like as if these are further, but actually the P and Q are very close to each other. So if you talk about uh, slope, that is gradient of gradient of curve, which is also called tan for given angle theta, if you write theta or alpha, whatever, 
so gradient of curve gradient uh, so gradient of the code code we call here pq will be given by difference of y by difference of x so in this case how we can get the difference of y actually so we are talking of gradient of this code first of all so here so gradient of pq we are talking of so it will be given by y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and then y2 minus y1 is uh, y2 you can see here y plus delta y and then y1 is here you can suppose uh, x1 y1 and this is x2 y2 and then y1 is y over here and then x2 minus x1 so this is x2 is x plus delta x and minus x1 is you can see here this is x and these two haven't cancelled out because of the opposite signs and this is dy by dx so this is the gradient of this code but what happens when q moves towards p okay so that means you can say q tends to p note that this is the notation for tends to tends to doesn't mean that q and p are equal in fact it is moving towards p and at some point if the tangent value is attained that means you can say that the limit of this movement is attained and we stop here so when q moves towards uh, p that is q tends to p what happens to delta x so as q is moving towards p delta x is going towards zero it's not equal to zero in fact but it is going towards zero it will be zero only when q coincides with p and as delta x tends to zero you can see uh, y will all, um, so increment in y that is delta y will also tend to zero okay so when delta x tends to zero delta y tends to zero then what happens gradient of the code pq or you can say qp okay tends to tangent of the line tangent of this line i am talking of tangent uh, tends to tangent of the line at point p x y this is also called the that is a uh, gradient of qp tends to the gradient of the curve you can say this curve is uh, y equal to fx so tends to gradient of the curve at point p x y okay so therefore you can write that as you can say lim limit limit means as delta x moves towards uh, q moves towards p the delta x will be zero and delta y will be also also zero so at this point when it starts moving here but uh, here it is showing the code but at this time here it shows the tangent at this point that means we call as the limit has reached and therefore you can write limit delta x tends to zero if you like you can you may also write delta y tends to zero because obviously delta y is also going towards zero and then delta y by delta x has some limit at point p and therefore you can say that in general dy by dx and once the limit is reached here it has some 
a specific value of uh, value of x and hence y at point p and this sort of thing is defined as differentiation of differentiation of the function y equals to fx you can say or y wrt means with respect to x so in this way we define dy by d y equals to fx is a given function and then also let delta x and delta y be a small increment in x and y respectively then what happens y has increment delta y so we add delta y to y and x has increment delta x so we add delta x to x not to fx fx means y itself so if you write fx plus delta x that means delta x we are going to increase in y not in x all right but y has another increment delta y so take care of the things at this point and now what you can do here delta y by delta x equals to you can write f x plus delta x and if it if you, you transfer this y to the right it is y and you know that from one y is y equals to fx so you can also write you see delta y only not delta y by delta x so your delta y equals to fx plus delta x minus y in place of y you can put fx and then you divide both side by delta x then here also you can divide this by x plus delta x minus fx by delta x all right so what it is actually this is in fact x plus delta x and then minus x okay so if you compare that with this graph then what happens uh, delta y by delta x is gradient of this code pp all right but we required tangent of the curve tangent of the line on the curve at some point p x y in that case what you have to say here that delta x tends to zero or delta and delta y tends to zero so when delta x and delta y both tend, uh, tend to zero, that means Q goes towards P and at P it reaches the limit. And hence in that case, uh, you can say that uh, dy, once Q, is reach, uh, Q reaches here, you can say that dy by dx is the gradient of the curve at point P. So therefore, you can say now that when you can write limit when delta x tends to zero. If you like, you can also write delta y tends to zero because if delta x moves towards zero, definitely delta y is going to be zero. So we are applying the things uh, towards the both side here. So here also you can write uh, limit delta x tends to zero even if you don't write delta y tends to zero, it means that there will be delta y zero. So you don't need to write it even here. So here we have it is delta y by delta x equals to f x plus delta x minus f x. And then finally it is delta x. You can see here that this is, uh, it is like this is y2 minus fx means y, uh, y1, uh, sorry, uh, y, uh, this is y2 and this is y, another, at first point you can say y1, at another point this, you, can, you can say y2, 
So this is y2 minus y1 and this is like up to here this is x2 and then this is x1. So this is the uh, difference of two points. That is the difference of y and difference of x. But this is gradient of the code for example like pq. So when delta x tends to 0 then what happens? Gradient of code tends to the tangent at this point and we call that the limit is rich. Therefore we apply here limit. And this sort of thing will now be called dy by dx equals to and this sort of thing can be written as f dash x. And now we can say that this is derivative of function y with respect to x. So either you say now dy by dx or f dash, f dash x, they have the same meaning. So for example, if you would like to, and, uh, and finding the derivative this way is called derivative of function by first principle or also you can say that by so here you can see that just the first step is that let delta x and delta y be a small increment with respect to x and y respectively. Then you can check back here once we have gone through that process then your dy by dx or f dash was fx plus delta x minus fx by delta x. So you can write its definition first like dy by dx equals to f dash x and that is limit of delta x tends to 0. In fact, delta y tends to 0 also. And this value, uh, this formula was x plus delta x minus fx. And then this is divided by delta x. So you have to keep on writing limit until you reach the limit, until you put this value. So you can see that fx value is here x cube. All right. But uh, here you can see that uh, in x, there is one increment according to this definition here. So that is delta x. So instead of writing x cube here, you can write x plus delta x cube. Okay. And then you divide this by delta x. Now keep on solving this until you remove the sign 0 by 0. Because 0 by 0 is called in deter minute form. Indeterminate form, we can't determine the value of 0 by 0. Some other examples of indeterminate form are infinity by infinity. Also, you can't determine this like infinity minus infinity and there are a few more terms which we cannot determine. Therefore, this is called inde uh, indeterminate form. So, here 3x and delta x and plus delta x square. Now, it is almost solved here. You can see now if you put delta x equals to 0 here, so this term is 0, this term is 0, and this is 3x squared. That means in this case, you do not have 0 by 0 form in this case. So once the 0 by 0 form is removed, uh, is, is no more here, then we suppose that the limit has reached over there. And at that point, you can put the value of delta x as 0. So in this case, you will see that this is 3x squared because there is no delta x. 
this is 3x so delta x 0 means it is 0 and then delta x squared uh, means delta x is 0 so that is 0 squared so finally it is 3x squared and this term is 0 another term is also 0 and then you will have derivative of y equal to x qs 3x squared uh, let's see how to find the derivative derivative of x squared or fx equal to x squared by using geometric interpretation of dy by dx and this will also be called the called by definition or by first principle so what you can do in this case you can see here that i'll write grade for gradient so you can see here gradient of ap is y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 this is just like this is just a slope formula or term okay and then you can see that in, this is uh, y2 and this is y1 and then this is you can say this is x1 x2 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 y2 sorry this is x2 and y2 and this is x1 and y1 so you can see that uh, y2 value is uh, in, in place of y2 you can write y plus delta y and in place of y you can write y y1 y1 you can write y in place of x2 you can write x plus delta x you can see here and then minus uh, you can write yes x1 means it is x so what you are getting here delta y by delta x all right so here you have and also if you would uh, like to write in the form of uh, x so here in this case you can see that px and y is x square then a point will be x means it is x plus delta x but y equal to x square instead of writing x square you can write x plus delta x square because there is an increment of delta x in x so therefore if it is x square then this is x plus delta x square which is equivalent to y plus delta y okay so what also you can write here that in place of y plus delta y you can write as x plus delta x and minus y means it is fx and in place of x plus delta x what you can write here yeah it is already x plus delta x you can cancel out these two so you have here delta x term and now if you use this sort of thing so x plus delta x means as fx is x squared here now so f x plus delta x will be x plus delta x squared. So you can write here x plus delta x squared and in place of fx we have already given here x squared and divided by this is delta x. And here also you can see that uh, this is the difference of ys, difference of uh, xs here. So if you take the ratio of delta y by delta x, it will give you the gradient of the code ap so this sort of thing we have done here that means if you take a to p the limit hasn't reached over here so in that case this is again in zero zero form so this is still the gradient of this code ap so now let's cancel out and then it is 2x plus delta x so in this case even if you put delta x as zero you will have some a specific value and it will show the tangent of the line at point P or the gradient of the curve at point P with a, a specific value 2x. So now you can do here as you can say delta x tends to 0. Then what happens? A tends to P and gradient of the line has some you can say a specific value that means the limit has reached so this tangent of this code becomes 
sorry, the gradient of this code becomes tangent of this line at point P, or you also you can say that gradient of the curve at point P, and as A reaches P, then you can say that limit has reached here. So as delta X tends to zero, A tends to P, means limit has reached, and gradient of the line has some specific value, which is here, 2x. So therefore, what you can say that limit of this limit delta x tends to 0 for gradient of AP, which is the ratio of delta y by delta x. That means you can write limit delta x tends to 0. That means delta y tends to 0 also. This is delta y by delta x. And if you write gradient of AP, so here also you can write limit lim also you can write delta x tends to zero where, where are you going to apply this you're going to apply here in this term 2x plus delta x now put this value zero then it is you don't need to write limit then so it is 2x plus zero we have already used this limit so we stop writing this so it is 2x now that is dy by dx for the function y equals to, you can see here, y equals to x squared here. So you can write here, y equal to x squared by dx, our answer is 2x. So in this way, we can find derivative of any function by using definition or by the first, this is 2x, so you can write here 2x. Let's compare these two. What happens in general? What has happened here? So at this point, you can see that while going from this step to this step, you can see that this is 3. So this is 3x to the power. You can see here this is 2. Then can you write this is 3 minus 1? Yes. What similar thing can you do here? This is power two, so two is in front. This is power three, three is in front, and less than three is here on this power. So same thing is over here also. So it is two, you can also write this as two x to the power two minus one, all right? So by using this sort of thing, so therefore we can say in general if y equals to x to the power n, so n is any real number, then dy by dx, that is dx to the power n by dx will be, if you use this or this, so n will go in front, then x to the power 1 less than n, so this is n minus 1. So, this is the formula to find the derivative of given function in general, all right? So, this is a good idea is that you understand all these things geometrically. That means what is the geometrical uh, interpretation of dy by dx. And once you understood this, your work becomes easy. You can just apply this formula. For example, you are given that d find the derivative of x to the power 5 dx, then you can write it 5x, 5 minus 1, and this is 5x4. Similarly, you are given that d by dx to the power uh, 7 then, for example, or 17, for example, by dx. So it is 17 will be in front. You can write it directly. 1 less than 17 is x to the power 16. As n is any real number, so for example, you say this is root x by dx, so it is d uh, power half by dx, so half is n, so you can write here 2, and then x to the power half minus 1, just by using this formula, and this is half x to the power minus half, uh, this is the answer, or even, also you can write it is 1 by 2 as it is negative power, so this is x to the power half, and you can write this as 1 by 2 root x. 
And for example, if you would like to find the derivative of uh, one by x squared, for example, by dx, then what you can do actually write in the form of x to the power n. So here, if you break this reciprocal, so it is x to the power minus two, and then this is dx. Now suppose minus two s n, so n will go in front, and then x to the power minus x to the power n minus one. So in place of n, there is minus two. So finally, it is minus 2x minus 3. So this is the answer. Also, you can express like this 2 to the 2 by x cube because if it is power negative power, then if you make a reciprocal. So in this case, what you can do here, dy by dx equals to dy by dx of 16x cube. Now 16 is constant number. So we take this out common. So it is dx cube by dx and just now you have seen that just by applying the formula n x n minus one so in place of n there is three so this is three and minus one is a two so you can write three x square and this is 48 x square what if you are going to find derivative of 16 only that is a constant all right any number is a this is a constant so here do you have a dx equals to d by dx of 16, 16 is constant, so take this outside. So d here it is left with one, so one times 16 is 16, so you can write one, and then dx, anyway, uh, you make uh, this term in terms of x. So what you can see here, 16 times dx to the power zero, because any number to the power zero is one. So by this, and this is, it is uh, 16 times, you apply in place of n, there is zero, so this is zero times, x to the power 0 minus 1. So multi, uh, if you multiply any number or any term by 0, it is 0. So therefore, derivative of any constant, if you say, by dx is 0. That means if this is constant, not the variable. All right? And also, if you like to see the further about that, so y equals to 16x cube, for example, and this is 2 root x and then this is 5 then dy by dx once you are used to of all these things so you can directly write that because 16 is uh, constant so it will be taken out so it is 16 times 3x square and plus you know that uh, 2 times its power is half so n is half and then x is half minus 1 and derivative of constant is 0 so it is 48x square and 2 and 2 cancel out and x to the power minus half is it is one by root x and then this is the answer so we have few important examples here so you can have a look at this example you can see by considering the gradient of a suitable sequence of codes find a value for the gradient of the curve at the given point so y equal to x4 at 1 1 okay so here gradient look at here that in the language gradient of the curve gradient of the curve means the line should be tangent at, at that particular point on the on the curve so that means if this is a curve and this is this point is for example say one and one so we are not going to find the gradient of the code actually we are going to find the gradient gradient of the curve at that point that means you have to find the tangent of this line at this point where x equals to one. So this sort of thing, gradient of this line is given by dy by dx. That means you have to find derivative of this function. So it is dy by dx you can see here. So n will be in front and x to the power four minus one is three. And it is saying that at point which one one that means here x equals to one we have to put and then you can see that gradient at that at that point is dy by dx equals to four times of x equals to one here so you can write here one cube so four times of one is four so this is the answer for this question and similar thing you can do here also here also and here also only the thing is that we have to find the derivative of the given function so here in this case dy by dx of 1 by x means x to the power minus 5 because reciprocal if you take 
upside, then it is f to the power one, so it is minus one. And then you apply the formula, 12 times n value is here, minus one, and then x, n minus one, so negative one, n is negative one here, all right? And if you are confident, you can write, you can just copy this and write this term directly. So here in this case, uh, negative times 12, positive 12 is negative 12, that is minus 12, and x to the power, this is minus two, and then it is minus 12, you can make reciprocal of this, so it's going to be x square, but uh, in this case, you have to find dy by dx at which point? You can see indeed that is two and six, so x value is two here, so you point, you write down it is x equals to two, and uh, in that case, your dy by dx value will be minus 12 by x square means this is 2a square, that is minus 12 by 2 to the 4, so this is minus 3, and this is the answer for this question. Okay, guys, this is all for now. Uh, it was a quick look over how to find derivative of a given function. So this is all for now and thank you for your patience.